In this video, I'll show you how to work with watercolors and gouache and we'll create this simple yet sophisticated mini rosebush painting. Hey friends, welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell and this is my first video of 2022. I took an extended holiday with Chris and our seven month old Sully and now I am back and I'm ready to get some painting in. Take a little creative me time for yourself this weekend and paint along with me. Here's what we're using. I just have um, these tiny little handmade papers. Uh, they're from Montreal. I'll link them in the description but you can use any watercolor paper but we are going to work small. And then I have my set of watercolor paints, again, linked in the description, but use the paints that you have on hand. Um, it's nice to have some washi tape to tape your small piece of paper in place. And then I have uh, a number three round brush and I also have an oval mop brush. And this is also a gouache project. So I have my Windsor and Newton gouache here. If you're not familiar with this medium, don't worry. I will talk all about it when we get to that part of the project. I also have a couple glasses of clean water, paper towel for blotting my brush. And we're going to start by mixing up our colors together. First of all, I'm using a wet brush to bring a cobalt blue over to the palette. And then I'm mixing in a little bit of French gray. Again, using a clean brush to pick up the French gray and I'm able to mix them on the palette. So I'm always using a clean brush or trying to when I actually scrub at the cake of paint. And then all the mixing happens over on the palette. And you see, I've mixed a little white in there. Those are the colors I'm going to use for the sky. Then we are painting this wild rose bush. So I need some greens for the backdrop. All of the roses will actually be painted in gouache, but the sky and kind of the foliage of this wild rose bush are going to be painted with watercolor. So I am grabbing a little bit of olive brown and deep fallow green, my two favorite greens, and we will work with uh, some sort of mix of those. And then sometimes I like to mix a little bit of indigo and fallow green together to give me like a super dark and rich green. Okay, let's begin with our sky. For the sky, I'm using the larger oval wash brush, picking up a little bit of that French gray and cobalt blue, and I kind of just want to make a little bit of a mess up here at the top of the piece of paper. Just using the top third of my page and you can see I'm kind of grabbing from the light area where there's a lot of white, grabbing some darker blue and just kind of making a little bit of a mess. I want it to look like there are some clouds but also just a little bit of deep blue sky peeking through especially at the upper corners. And with the sky, I definitely think less is more. So let's leave that alone for now. And then what I'm gonna do is use the large brush and just wet the entire bottom two thirds of that page. This is just clear water going on. And then we can have a bit of wet into wet fun when we use that large brush to start adding the green. And I've got different shades of green here so I can kind of pull from different colors, being careful not to let it bleed into the sky. <laughs> I make this big green wash. Then while that green wash is still wet, we're going to take our smaller round brush and grab some of those really dark rich greens. And we are going to start adding to the wet area. First of all, what I'm doing here is just kind of adding some dark shadow. And then I kind of want to start hinting at stems and leaves and anything that you think would look like it would be part of a rose bush. So tiny little leaves and branches and lines just indicate um, those stems and branches. And the beautiful thing is that because you're working wet into wet and adding color to this wash, it's all going to blend and bleed beautifully and give you a very abstracted quality, which is going to look very sophisticated and painterly, but it's very, very simple and easy, easy to achieve even for an absolute beginner.
Take care to pull from different areas of the green. So you can see here, I have some areas that are very much olive brown, other areas that are very much deep phthalo green. And you can see there's these different colors and variations within the rose bush. And again, that's going to make your work look very painterly and sophisticated, but all you're doing is using two colors of green. You're working a little wet into wet. And as it begins to dry and you keep on layering and you keep painting leaves and branches, those leaves and branches are going to bleed out and blend less and less as that wash uh, gets drier. And you're going to build up this beautiful wild rose bush. Um, and it's so fun and simple to paint. And you can see I'm actually adding some little leaves onto the sky area. Of course, that's not wet into wet, that's wet on dry. So those are going to be very precise and that's a good thing. And then I've also sort of left um, a lighter area right in the center and that's just simply because I know I'm going to place a lot of roses there so I don't need to add a lot of detail. Okay we're done with our watercolors for now. We'll set them aside for later and we're moving on to the gouache portion. So I'm just kind of flipping my palette over. I have a couple different colors, a very light pink, white, red, and brown. That's probably all you'll need. Um, basically, you just want to create some different hues of pink. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Gouache is the consistency of toothpaste. So you just squeeze out a few little dollops. But when you use it, when you actually paint with it, you want it to be the consistency of water or soup. It should be liquid. If you're coming from acrylics, it's very tempting to use gouache straight out of the tube, but don't. It just doesn't work very well. It's wonderfully opaque even when you mix in a lot of water. So what you see me doing here is mixing up a few shades of pink by adding a white and red and even a little brown to um, just make it a little less pink, you know, like bright pink. And so just like with watercolor, I'm playing around, mixing up some different shades and uh, I, I have this wonderfully watery paint that is still very very opaque it's going to go right over that dark green let me just show you so first step with the gouache is to take um, a medium pink like a darker pink and we're going to paint a bunch of messy circles and those circles of course will be the roses in our wild rose garden or rose bush make sure you do some of different sizes um, every Everything of mine is kind of getting smaller as it rises up towards the sky and that's just hinting at a little bit of perspective and depth within the piece. So tinier circles up on the horizon line, larger roses as you come towards the bottom of the paper, but just make them really messy. Messy is best and just use that medium pink. We will build up color in layers. For now, a single pink is all you need. Okay, once you like the look of the roses and you have enough, you're going to walk away. That first layer is complete and we just need to let it dry. Doesn't take long to dry, <laughs> maybe a few minutes. Took the time it took me to mix up a lighter pink and make sure I liked the color, that was about it. And you can see here, I'm just adding a bit more white, bit more of that peachy color. And now we're going to do these messy brush strokes using the lighter peachy pink. And it really brings those roses to life. I think you can really see now just how wonderfully opaque the gouache is. You can have a very dark green as your base layer and then add white right on top of it. It's actually incredible what you can do with gouache and watercolor. So I encourage you to check the links in the description, maybe pick some up for yourself. Now for my third layer, I'm using a very, very light baby white pink and we're just adding a little tiny bit more detail these messy curving brush strokes this is a mini painting that is all about the abstraction so don't get hung up just do these messy brush strokes and leave it alone and finally i'm mixing up a really dark rusty reddish pink <laughs> almost a brown and we're just going to put some tiny little dots kind of at the top center of each flower to make it look like it is a little bit concave. 
just a hint at the uh, sort of layered and concave nature of the rose. At this point, we totally could be done with those roses. I want to add just a hint more detail. So I'm wetting that really light pink again and picking it up on my brush. And I'm almost doing like kind of those messy bottom petals that fall away from the rose. I want to add a couple of those to some of the larger roses, especially the ones in the foreground here. And you can see it's still very much abstracted and messy. And I think it adds a little something. With our gouache complete, let's grab some of that watercolor again. You'll probably have to wet it, maybe mix in a little more pigment. I'm using a nice dark green. Again, still using my number three round brush, the same brush I used for the gouache and, and for uh, some of that watercolor before. And we're just hinting at more stems and branches and leaves, adding little tiny leaves kind of above some of the flowers, some dark spots tucked in between to look like stems and leaves. And that's it for the, for the painting. Now we move on to the most fun step. You know I love this, taking off the tape. And this is so exciting because you have that nice clean border and your painting goes from a work in progress to this really finished piece in one simple step. She looks so good and I'm quite pleased with that. I hope that you'll try working with watercolor and gouache in combination. It's a lot of fun and you can do some really interesting things. Try a new medium. Links are in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon with a new tutorial.